Hey folks, uh, in this video we're going to talk about, and I'll, I'll say quote unquote, discharging an inductor. Okay, so uh, this circuit is the one we used in the previous video. You don't need to recopy it if you already have it sitting in front of you in your notes. Okay, so let me kind of refresh what we did in the previous video. At In the previous video, at t equals zero, we um, closed this switch. Okay. And we talk, we figured out what current should be when you first close the switch, what it should be after a long, long time, and we calculated the in-between times, what the current is, um, and voltage for the inductor as well. So now here's what we're going to do. We're going to say after that switch has been closed a long time and the circuit's reached a steady state, we know that these are our currents, right? Uh, the current through R2 and L is going to be half an amp. The current through R3 is half an amp. Therefore, the total current going through the battery is one amp. Okay. And then now we're going to open the switch and see what happens. So that's why I have this drawn here. So again, you don't have to redraw this if you already got it drawn. And I did label that um, I, I2 and I3 are each half an amp and, and I1 would be an amp. Okay. So when we open the switch, what's going to happen? Well, first of all, no current will flow over here at all because the switch is open over there so current can't go around the loop there and remember what an inductor's job is an inductor's job is to try to keep current the same so right before we open the switch i2 was half an amp right after we open the switch guess what i2 is still going to be half an amp okay <laughs> but so current will flow down through R2 and L, and it will then flow up through R3 in a counterclockwise loop um, around that little right-hand loop there. Now, um, what's current as a function of time? Well, the other thing you need to know is what's the current after a long time? Well, after a long time, the inductor is going to behave like what it is, which is simply a winding of wire, and eventually current will be zero because wire doesn't do anything. So um, the current is going to start at half an amp and decay to zero. So our function is going to be we have half an amp. Do we want E or 1 minus E? Well, in this case, we want E to the negative T over tau. We want something that decays from a max value to zero, and E to the negative T over tau does that. So the only other thing you got to figure out is what's tau. Well, tau is equal to L over REQ. Now, remember what REQ means in this case. It means what resistance does the inductor see or encounter as current goes through the inductor? Okay. Well, in this case, and uh, I guess I'll use uh, I'll use the yellow. I guess current the half amp is going to go through the inductor, through R three, and through R two to get back to the inductor. So your L is is 0.1 millihen or 0.1 henrys, 100 millihenrys. Okay, what's REQ? Well, you have to go through 10 plus 10, 20 ohms in series. So that's your REQ. So this is 0 0.005. That is your time constant. So your current as a function of time will be one half e to the negative t over 0 0.005. Okay. Um, now, uh, so that's current, and it, that decays to zero. Uh, what's the EMF of the inductor? Well, there's actually two ways to do this. I'll show you both because they're both pretty quick. One way is to say, well, uh, e is negative l di dt which is negative 0.1 times the derivative of this current. So what's the derivative of that function? Well, it's 1 half times negative 1 over 0 0.005 e to the negative t over 0 0.005. And so we have two negatives, so they cancel out. Uh, this 1 over 0 0.005 is 200. Half of that's um, 100.1 times that is 10. So we get 10 e to the negative t over 0 0.005. So that's one way to do that. Now, having said that, notice it's positive. It's positive because it's going to try to keep the current flowing the way it was. I2 was flowing down before we opened the switch. The, the inductor is going to basically kind of replace what the battery was doing for us. It's going to keep current flowing down uh, through the center of the circuit. Okay. Now, by the way, the current through R3, that reverses, but there's no inductance over there, so that's fine. That guy current can change as, as quickly as it wants. Uh, finally, the other, oh, they, I'm sorry, there's two more things. The other way to get this is to say, well, this inductor has to push half an amp through 20 ohms. 
How many volts does that take? Well, V equals IR. Half an amp times 20 ohms is 10 volts. So that's the other way to get this 10 out front here is to just know it's I times R. Okay. Now, the last thing we're going to do is when we open that switch, a finite amount of current is going to flow th through the inductor um, before current stops flowing. So what we're going to calculate is how much charge flows through the inductor. And what we're going to do is we're going to calculate the, the, the amount of charge versus time, and then the total charge that flows to the inductor before current shuts off. Okay. So how we're going to do that? So uh, we're going to find Q as a function of time first. Well, we know that I is equal to dQ dt. So dQ equals I dt. Okay, so dQ equals, and our current is uh, 1 half uh, E to the negative T over 0 0.005. So that's um, times dT. So that is dQ. And now guess what we're going to do? We're going to integrate both sides, right? So the left side, the charge starts off. We start with zero charge through the inductor, and then we have some charge sometime later. On the left side, time we we're opening the switch at time equals zero, and we're going to some time later. Okay, so on the left side, the integral of dQ is Q. We're evaluating that from zero to Q, which is simply Q. Um, the right side is the fun part. So we have to integrate this. So we have a half, and then e to the negative t over 0 0.005 divided by this this thing in the exponent, negative 1 over 0 0.005. And we have to be very careful and evaluate that from 0 to t. Okay, So if we simplify that down, um, we get a negative. Um, it's 0 0.005 times a half, which is um, negative 0 0.0025. Uh, e to the negative t over 0 0.005, okay? And we have to evaluate that, oh my gosh, that's so important, from 0 to t, <laughs> okay? So we end up with q equals, if I plug in t, I get negative 0 0.0025 e to the negative t over 0 0.005 minus negative 0 0.0025. Um, and if I plug in 0, what's e to 0? Well, that's just one. Okay, so there's our, our, our thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to factor out the point zero zero two five, and I'm going to put this term first because it's going to be positive because those two negatives will cancel. We get 1 minus e to the negative t over point zero zero five. And frankly, a better way to write this q as a function of time would be if I move my decimal point over 3, it's 2.5 times 1 minus e to the negative t over 0 0.005 uh, millicoulombs. Okay, so that's that's charge that flows through the inductor as a function of time. The total q is we're going to plug time approaches infinity. Okay, after a long, long time, how much charge has flowed through this? Well, if I plug in e to the negative big number, I get 0. So the total charge that flows through the circuit is simply 2.5 times 1 minus 0, or 2.5 millicoulombs. All right, so that's the total charge that flows through that inductor before current ceases, ceases to flow at all in the circuit. All right, I hope that video was helpful, and thank you very much.